Barnet Council closed Friend Barnet Library after ignoring an 18-month campaign by local residents desperate for it to stay open. However, the popular amenity is back in use after a group of squatters got to work. Uh, so we've, we've only actually opened the doors last Saturday till this Friday. During those five-ish days, uh, we've had over a thousand books donated. We have between 50, 60, 70 people a day walking in, old people, young people, people with pushchairs and kids, uh, bringing in carrier bags of books, shaking our hands, so overjoyed that their local community hub, their library, their community centre is open again. It's not just a library to these people, it is a, a centre, a heart of their local area community. The old people come in here and keep warm in the winter, uh, the parents and the kids, so they don't want to have to get on a bus to take their kids another three miles to the next library. The, li the council basically, due to the cuts, are trying to close down two, two libraries and squeeze them into a room up at the Arts Depot. None of the locals want that, they want this library. Uh, it's part of the austerity law, which is actually, you know, we're not in a recession, we're a robbery, you know, we're paying for the banker's crisis. Why don't they actually put some of these bankers on trial? confiscate some of their money and we can have some public services, just like they've done in Iceland. You know? It's fantastic, it needs to be reopened. It ne it's the only local library for Free and Barnet. They're saying to go to, I think the one near Muswell Hill, but it's too far for residents, especially like elderly people. They don't, they want to walk to the library, they don't want to catch a bus. So why is it the council closing it down if it's so wanted by the... Community? They just want to sell the land and make money. That's, they just want to build, apparently they want to sell the land and make some flats and obviously it's going to make a lot of money. After initial concerns, the Save Frame Barnet Library campaign has warmed to the squatters and will now be joining them in meetings with the council on Monday. Uh, as I say, I've been, lived in the area for nearly 30 years and this is my library. So how did you feel when you closed it down? Uh, I was very, I was deeply saddened actually and as I've said to people, why should I pay £4.20 to get a bus to travel to another library when I literally live across the road? And so, how, how obviously the campaign, the council has been listening to the original campaign, and these chaps have come along and opened it up. I mean, the, the community happy about that? Yeah, um, this, as um, one of you guys have said, there seems to be quite a bit of support now. Books are coming in. I've just donated magazines and videos to help them as well. Uh, and if they needed tables or any other support, we're quite prepared to help them. You know store books for them out the region and we give them our fold up tables so you know keep things going which we did when the library was closed. And what would you say to the council who's insistent that they need to be sold? Without being offensive, reopen it. We had a meeting with the council last week. They thought they were just going to come in, meet with three or four squatters. We invited the Safe Free and Barnet Library campaign in, Google them, loads of you know back hard work done on that one and stuff and they were in a circle of about 25 people we taught them direct democracy you know occupy movement activists fingers consensus jazz hands all that and uh, got them all talking to each other and said look we can find some solutions here it's a way we can run it low cost bottom line is the council wants to flog it for half a million to a few million and get rid of the village green status and uh, sell it for whatever a shop and a block of flats or whatever um, but it's definitely changed people's opinions majorly. One of the th beautiful things on the radio the other day, uh, a woman or an elderly man turned around and said, well, it seems like the squatters seem to care for people more than the government does. <laughs> uh, which is a brilliant line. And then one of our lot said, well, that's not hard, is that any more? There's 420,000 empty commercial buildings out there. Squatting is still legal in non-residential and commercial buildings. So that means schools, hospitals, libraries, shops, factories, community centres, mills, there's still a lot out there, keep squatting, some people are still going to be squatting residential and barricading them up a lot more, but you know, we need to find the, the solutions, you know, you can create a million jobs by getting the million empty buildings back into use, you know, what is the point in putting so many people into prison, the government produced a report saying they're prepared to put up to 4,000 people in prison for this offence over the next year, costing 40, 50,000 pounds per person, you know, we want solutions, we don't want criminalisation, go to the squashcampaign.org or advisory service for squatters which is squatter.org.uk for more info um, or evictionresistance.blogspot.co.uk 
and eviction resistance particularly are collating how many people are being evicted, trying to get people down to support them. Let's stand firm and let's create you know, the better future that we want to see. There's a big change coming.